the uh, mathematics. No, it, it comes, comes from your brain. Your brain. You must use your brain to solve for the mathematics. So watch that. That really is um, a critical component. Okay, we have a couple of examples, mathematical problems that we're going to try and solve. Okay. So um, here it is. You so can read it in your handout. You can read it in your handout. So I got some uh, magnesium. Yep, magnesium dropped into 125 milliliters of HCl. All right, so let's just write the reaction. Magnesium. Yeah, reacts with hydrochloric acid. It's like a stoichiometry problem, so we'll start with a... Balanced chemical equation. And it turns into what? Um, well, it doesn't tell us, but we've already done our product prediction unit, so I'm assuming that you all can figure this out. So the magnesium has a zero charge. So yep. You don't want to go up to Mg2 positive. Yep. And um, so he went up. So yep. we need to find somebody to go down. Hydrogen's going to go down. Hydrogen can drop down H2, to H2. And, and we're going to have some chlorides left Leaves over. the chlorides left out. Should and we so balance our equation? And to balance this, of course, you would need a two, two here, here, and I believe chlorides. a two here. Yep. And that is our equation. Now, what do we know, Mr. Sanders? We have 3.25 grams of magnesium. Three and a quarter grams. We have 125 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We have an initial temperature of the calorimeter at 18.5 degrees. And the final temperature is 25.6 degrees. And we're assuming the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 4.86 joules per gram degree Celsius. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out well, delta H. Yep. Delta H is the kilojoules per divided by the moles. moles. So we're going to use some of the information to find the kilojoules. And the equation you're going to use to solve for this will be the Q, Q is equal to M C, C delta, delta T. T, the MCAT equation, I like to call that. And then the moles, we're going to get, get from the moles of, of which? Of, should be from our magnesium. You're right. Now, how would you know that, though, Mr. Sam? Uh, let's see. How would I know that? You would know that because you I actually know. Want I don't know how I know You that. would have to do the one that is the limiting reactant. There you go. And you have plenty of hydrochloric acid and yeah. not nearly as much magnesium. Okay. So let's do the Q equals MC delta T equation first, and then we'll divide. Okay. So what's Q, of course, is our variable. Okay. M is the mass. Now, what do we do for mass? Mass. Well, since this is going on in a calorimeter, usually we're looking at the change of temperature of some water. And the thing that has the water in it is our hydrochloric acid. And so actually we actually need to add the total mass of the system though is the addition of these two. Correct. Now, even so once you throw the magnesium in there it reacts and that is part of the mass of the stuff. But I can't add 3.25 grams with 125 milliliters. No. But the nice thing is that hydrochloric acid is mostly water, and the density so, of water is 1. So 1 milliliter is equal to 1 gram, yep. and so that's 125 grams. So yep. our total mass is going to be 128 grams. I'm going to not worry about the 0.25 from a significant dig digit perspective. So our mass is 128 grams. So that's okay. M. Now the C is given to is us. Given. It's 4.86 4. 4. joules over grams degrees Celsius. It's a little higher. Why do you think it's a little higher than 4.8? Well, we're taking into account probably the cup that it's in and yeah. it's also the fact that it's not pure water. It's hydrochloric acid and has some magnesium and stuff in it. And our change in temperature went from 18 to 25.6. 25, yeah. Oh, I should probably get my calculator. Five, uh, six and a half. 7.1. 7.1. Yep. Well, I almost got there. 7.1 degrees Celsius. So we just simply multiply 128 times 4.86 times 7.1, and that gives you? That gives you 4417 joules. And that's in joules. Now, the reason you know this is in joules, ladies and gentlemen, because this is joules right here. Yep. Now, we're going to take that. That is our number on the top. So let me uh, create a new screen. So it's 4, what was it again? 4417. 44171. All right, hold on. Four four one seven, seven joules. joules, and I will then divide it by the moles. Yep. Now, how do I find the moles? Well, what we have grams of magnesium, three point two five. So our grams of magnesium is our limiting reactant. Yep. And so we need to then take our three point two five grams of magnesium, and we need to convert that to moles using its molar mass, which 24 is twenty four point three grams of mg. So we get point one three four. 0 0.134 moles of magnesium. Now that goes on my other screen here. 0 0.134 moles, and I get a whopping number. Well, we do here. need to make sure we're in joules per mole. Yeah, so what is it in joules per mole? That joules per mole is 32963. Three. Three, that's a pretty big number. That Mr. is Sam's a pretty big number. Thing. And that's in joules per one mole. Yep. We'd like to, at this point to convert to kilojoules mm -hmm. per mole. So there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule, 
and the joules cancel. And yep. I'm going to probably just say 33.0, probably from a 3.0 kilojoules. Now that is per actually per mole is not the correct answer, Mr. Sands. What? Yes. Why is that not the correct answer? It is because we have not considered the sign of delta H. Oh, because sign. the temperature went from 18.5 to 25.6. The temperature rose. The temperature of the water went up, which tells me that the reaction that is happening in the water released energy. So therefore, this is where we need to then say, oh, the negative sign, sign is negative. So we did not, the math did not yield us no. the answer. So the end of these problems, you've got to always ask the yes. question, is it endothermic? Then it would be positive. Or exothermic, like this example, which is negative. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. If the heat temperature goes up, it's going to be exothermic. Right. Now be careful because the water is the surroundings. Yes. Okay. The system is the magnesium and the HCl, and it's happening in the water. So the water is the surroundings, and that's what's warming up. So this. Right. So be careful. We're so measuring the, the temperature. Of the Here's surroundings. the reaction, and the energy is flowing out of this into the water. Yep. And that's. It, it's really important to kind of think that through. Yeah. To solve these problems. Okay. You're going to you actually do an experiment just yep. like this in class, mm -hmm. and with actually these same chemicals. All right. And then we're going to do one more here. Um, uh, Okay, you know, before we do this example, guys, um, let's actually talk physically how this is done. Um, I realize I actually skipped a screen, and if you go back, you'll see this cool picture. This is the, where I put the heat equation. Yes. Ha -ha. Ah, That's Q equals it. MC delta T. This is what you were supposed to put here. I was kind of, we did this out of order, and I couldn't figure out what I had done. Okay, so this thing called calorimetry, we use a... Um, calorimeter. Calorimeter. And this is an example right here of a calorimeter, um, this picture right here. And it's a device here. You can see this would be the, the liquid, probably water. Mm -hmm. You have a stirring rod right here. You can see that right here. And the reaction is taking place inside of this yeah. thing. Now, this one's actually called a bomb calorimeter. Yeah. This is how they determine how many calories are in your food. Yeah, basically they take the food object, uh, the Snickers bar or whatever, and they put it right here, and they, they burn it. They yeah, literally they, burn they it. pump that chamber full of oxygen, and they ignite it. Yeah, they have an electrical... Uh, and connection. it literally burns and blows up in there. That's why it's called a bomb calorimeter. But it's made so well that it doesn't uh, blow apart into parts. All the heat... Goes into the water. Yeah, all the energy actually is just turned into heat. Yeah. And that goes into the water. You measure the temperature change. You can figure out how many... Now, that, that's a kind of expensive device. Yeah. You can also get um, what we call a coffee cup calorimeter. Yes. And a coffee cup calorimeter is over cheap. You get a styrofoam cup. Coffee cup, hence the name. And then you... Uh, and if you want to go high tech, you can nest two of them together. Yeah, we can get mm. two of them together. Ooh, and now you've got from Super 20 insulation. cents to 40 cents. Yep. Okay, and so then you have your reaction take place. So like the example we just did, if this was, say, hydrochloric acid, uh -huh. and you'd put a little strip of magnesium in there... And then uh, the reaction would take place. And you just and have a thermometer sticking out stick in a there. Thermometer. And sometimes if you want really high tech, you would put another styrofoam cup on the, Over top, the top of it. And it would be like a cap. Wow. And it would be now I always 60 used, cents. I always used a piece of cardboard at my last school. Two coffee cups and a piece of cardboard. That is high tech. Now, yeah. it, amazing. Nothing but the finest in public education, folks. That's, That's right. right. Indeed. But... Uh, <laughs> Even though that sounds kind of cheesy, the reality is, is this yields pretty good results. It works wonderfully. You actually usually yeah. can get within about 5% oh, yeah. of the actual it's answer great. compared to this expensive bomb calorimeter that we showed you just a moment ago. Yeah. So these coffee cup ones, though, we, we deride them a little bit. They actually are pretty good. And yeah. That's how we would do uh, an experiment like this. Yeah, it looks totally chimpsy and cheap, but it's, it's great. It gives great results, which is why we do it. And every chemistry class in the country that I've ever known of does this lab. Yeah, and so we will, of course, do it ourselves. Of course. And then lastly, um, let's do this last example, because you have this specific heat. And so this is a particular problem where we are going to take our expensive, uh, or whatever, <laughs> calorimeter. Yeah. And then we have, we, what we have in here is we have some uh, cold water. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of metal that's um, very hot. Yeah. And I, not very, very hot, but hot. Hottish. And we're going to drop it into the water. And what's yes. going to happen to the water? When the you put a temperature hot of the of water is going to go up, and the temperature of the metal is going to go down. And the metal will go down. And the interesting thing is the temperature that the water goes up to and the metal goes down to is the same temperature. That is very, 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 Important. very, very, very.
Very what? Important. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so... And inspirational. And very... We must be inspirational all the time. As students, it's important to be inspired. Are we inspiring you? Right? Yeah, I, I certainly hope so. I hope we are inspiring you to become amazing um, inspirational speakers. Actually, scientists would be Chemists, better. yeah. Chemists, yeah. We don't want them to be inspirational speakers. That's going to cut into your market. That's true. I yeah. want them to be scientists. That's right. Maybe I can be an inspirational speaker to scientists. There you go. There we go. Because yeah. I'm a scientist and I know those things. So maybe I, they, I have a better connection with those brainiac types. Perhaps. Okay. So here's right. the problem. What you're going to do is that we're going to take a sample piece of copper. So actually this piece of metal right here, let's just call it copper. Right. And let's kind of write down what we know. And by I, the way, guys, when you get to a problem like this, draw a picture. Yeah. It is so helpful to draw a picture. See, I'm going to draw a new picture um, so I can label the, the part. So yep. a piece of copper, this is the copper, has a mass of? Mass of 46.2 grams. And then in this, I have some... And it's... Oh, it's, it has a temperature, too. 95.4 degrees Celsius. 95. How would you get it to 95.4 I would probably Celsius? just put it in some boiling water. Yeah. Well, why doesn't it... Shouldn't it be 100 degrees Celsius? Uh, if you're at sea level, um, maybe. But where we live, of course, the boiling... About 92-ish. 92. So this would be somewhere maybe like a Denver condition, which is actually where I think I got it from. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, we know some okay. about the water. It goes into the calorimeter. There are 75 grams of water. The water is at 19.6 degrees Celsius. So we drop it in, and they both come to a final temperature of 21.8 degrees Celsius. So, folks, this is a super easy experiment. Right. You take and we want to find the heat capacity of the copper. The, is the copper is, is, is hot. You just have it in some boiling water, so you probably have a hot plate or something like that. Yep. And then you um, have a, a beaker on top, and your piece of copper is inside it. And once it's boiled, you take it out, probably a pair of tongs, it'd be kind of hot, and you drop it into here. And then it's going to raise the temperature of the cold water a little bit. Yep. But the thing is, is you can find the specific heat of the metal. Now, how do you find the specific metal? You have to make a very important assumption. Yes, we have to assume that all of the heat from the metal was transferred to the water. And that's a pretty safe assumption because styrofoam is a really, really good insulator. It's not going to absorb much of that heat. Actually, in this experiment, the big issue in terms of the transfer of the heat is that you lose some heat in transferring it yes. to the water. So go well, fast. So you just transfer it as quickly as possible per tongs. So if you think about it, there's actually two cues here. Yep. There's the cue of the of water. the water, and there's the cue of the metal. Metal. And those are equal to one another. And except this is equal to MC delta T. One of them absorbs and the temperature. And this is MC delta T. But and this is a different mass. It. This is the water's mass. This is the metal's mass. But we're going to say that these two Qs are the same. So we can write um, that MC delta T of the metal is equal to MC delta T of the water. water. Actually, I switched my deals. Oh, well, that's fine. Either way. So yeah. now no. we're going to plug this in. So what is the mass of the metal? Is 46.2 46 46 grams. grams. We don't know what C is. So the specific heat of this one is C. That's our variable, our X, if you will, mm -hmm. if you want to be more algebraic. Now, this is a little tricky. What is the delta T of the metal? Well, the metal went from a hot temperature to a low. So when you do a delta, you take the... Um, um, the, blah, blah, the, uh, the final minus the initial? No, initial minus final. Why am I confusing myself? You know, I don't even think about initial minus final. I just always make an absolute value. Okay. It's just going to go that from... That works, too. It went from 95 to 19, so it's just subtract... Actually, it went to 21.8. Oh, it went to 21.8. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So you're going to take 95.4, subtract 21.8... 73.6. 70 some degrees, 70 what? 73.6. So this changed to 73.6. Yeah. It's very important. A lot of people are going to get this mixed up. The metal was hot, and it got cold. Yes. Okay. And then we can do the mass of the water. 75 grams. 75 grams. Now, water is something where we do know it's specific heat. 4.18. It's just the 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Mm -hmm. And the change in the temperature of the water, now, it is went from 19.6 up to 21.8. 2.2 2 degrees it Celsius delta. Just a, a small degrees, 2.2 degrees Celsius. Small because its specific heat is high. You simply now do your algebra and you solve for C. You divide both sides by 46.2 and 73.6 and your specific gear metal is going to be a small number 0 0.20 0 0.20 joules per gram degree Celsius and this would be the specific heat of of copper mm -hmm. okay uh, at least from this example I'm not sure that's exactly the correct answer yeah. but experiments are never give you totally exact notice also that this number right here the 0.2 is a very small number compared to 4.